Uh, my name is Klaus Berlich and I'm going to talk about 1.6 caching and uh, how to implement it in the extensions. Uh, primary focus of this session will be on the modules because this is the, where the, mo the major Im improvements went in 1.6. So how to I implement caching in modules and what options are available. I will, I will quickly do the introduction to the all different types of caching but I'll try to be as quick as possible because that's what I did the last year. So anybody that that went to my session last year, please <laughs> be patient. <laughs> uh, just wanted to, to uh, because I, I think I made uh, some nice graphics to show the. Uh, Sometimes people wonder why something is working or something is working differently as it should, but it's really because of it's covered by another layer of caching, uh, and that's uh, what I'm, I want to show here for the start. So uh, these are the all types of cache we have: page cache, component v cache, progressive cache, model cache, blah blah blah. blah. I will show a little bit later. And, uh, so that's page cache. If it's, as you see, it covers. There's the file from the plugin. It covers the whole page. So that's the component view cache. Uh, I tried to make it as graphical as possible, so it's easily understandable what's covered by it. That's the new layer in 1.6. There's the progressive caching. Uh, you cannot. You can, you can switch between progressive and the, uh, and the conservative caching. Conservative caching means that caching works as it worked in 1.5, where there was no this layer. Uh, this, this this is layer that caches like every unique set of modules that is there. Uh, uh, it, it, may be, it seems redundant, but actually it's, uh, the results of uh, speed increases are really dramatic because it, it uh, caches the uh, parsing of modules and this is something very, very slow because it, it has to do all of kinds of uh, uh, irregular expressions and uh, f uh, file loading uh, to pr just to render uh, all modules on one page. Uh, that's module cache, uh, and then you have smaller ones: function cache, uh, output cache, and row cache that are you really you underlaying uh, in the under layers, not visible in, on on the outside. So multiple caches, multiple layers. That's I think this one is the best. Uh, how you can see. So, for instance, if you are doing something in the in the module, and user has also the the uh, caching plugin turned it on, then you won't see any difference. Whatever you do, this, the results will be the same because it's covered the up by the upper layer. And it's important to know uh, when you are debugging that you have to, for instance, for instance, when you're working for, uh, with modules, you need to turn off the progressive cache. You just need to uh, the, uh, use the sta uh, conservative one because this one will show the effect of particular module. Uh, the pro uh, progressive uh, caching layer will cover up all the the modules. <coughs> Page cache. Uh, that's that's the done the plugin by the plugin, so we won't. Uh, lose any time here. Uh, and then you have progressive cache affects all modules. Model and component view cache. That's um, there where where we will start to go a little bit slower. Uh, mo so these two types are really grouped together because they are doing the same thing. And I, what I really tried to do is in 1.6 that uh, also modules are. The module cache is so uh, similarly usable as it's in the uh, component view cache. Uh, it's most widespread cache type, performs well in split terms, uh, but the un unfortunate side of this caching is that it disables any user extension framework interaction. Uh, so component view cache, uh, this, this is, now we come to the implementation side. Uh, before caching used just the URL as the caching ID. But that is really not safe because user can easily add 
a random parameter to the URL, and it f he can fill up your storage, caching storage. Uh, if it's, it's if it's disk caching storage, the, okay, then you then you will uh, probably get away with it. But if you're using, for instance, memcache, uh, you ca he can fill up your uh, caching uh, very very fa caching storage very very quickly uh, by you just adding and random is random and. Uh, ch changing this parameter and every every unique URL will create a new. That's for 1.5. That's why in 1.6 you have an array of safe URL parameters that you you pass to the uh, component view cache, like this. You see, that's a uh, con content controller usage usage is example. You just create. Okay, I have. ID category ID limit blah blah uh, with the filtering uh, filtering option, and uh, you pass this safe URL parameters to the to the display method, and then it will just use those parameters as ca for for creation of ca caching ID. So anything additional to this won't be used at all. So this. Uh, 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 they o DOS uh, uh, opportun window of opportunity is closed now. Uh, now, module cache. This one, it, it, uh, as I said previously, this is the area where most of the improvements, improvements went. Uh, beside this, all, kind, all these new options, uh, we now have uh, we now have an ability uh, that we add uh, CSS and JavaScript and all these header manipulations, uh, and th they will work actually with uh, when you can turn on the cache. If somebody, uh, if, if perhaps some of uh, some of you worked with modules in 1.5, when on the first load. the the, the uh, JavaScript call uh, add JavaScript. Uh, J document at JavaScript uh, uh, worked on the second load when it pulled out uh, from the cache. Uh, it just disregarded this because there's there's no interaction between framework and the module itself. It, it, it's, it sounds a bit uh, paradoxical, but that's how it works. Uh, and now uh, there are, there are uh, like this all kinds of these workarounds implemented that ca uh, that. Um, uh, caching is not stored as one big unit, uh, so the, the, what's in the cache is not stored in, as one big unit, but it's stored in smaller parts. So the, the header is stored separately, the, the, the body is stored separately, and then when cache comes, uh, it's fired, uh, uh, the, these headers are merged together again, uh, so th th in theory uh, it should produce the same output as uh, without the cache. Um, uh, new five modules modes of operation. Uh, this is where most expansions went, uh, because before you had just one, like semi-static mode of operation. You could just module cast. You could just turn it on or off, and that's that was it. Uh, okay, you can also have lifetime, but uh, that's a minor uh, option. Now you have five different options, and I'm going to explain how. And when to use these five uh, different types uh, and what, why they are there. Uh, three of, the, of those options are to set from module are, are just fired from module XML file, and two are meant to be used within within the module. They are they are actually like uh, proxies to callback. Uh, cache, so uh, they are caching the helper method of the uh, of the module, uh, and I'm going to show you how it's done in practice. Prax. Uh, mod modes to be set in XML. I, I tried to cover like most common option options, so you you wouldn't have to make them yourself uh, because, for instance, static one that's meant for the modules that really don't change. I don't know. Hello, user, and that's it, and it stays the same. It doesn't need to change, so it need, needs just one caching file, on, uh, so every user will get the same message. No, uh, of course, when you don't have a personalization in, the, in this, when you have just 
I don't know, modules showing one picture, for instance. Uh, and that picture is created, uh, created uh, on the fly, so it makes sense to use cache because if you're just using a static picture, doesn't, caching is not needed. Uh, so there is static one. There is also old static. That was some weird kind of, it's 1.5 definition of model caching. It's one cache file for all pages with the same module ID and one end user ID. Why they chose this, I don't know. Uh, but it's here for the old modules and for the modules uh, not using the opportunities available in new, uh, new caching system so that they still work the same as they, they did before. And it's also the de default if you don't specify any of the new, new uh, kinds, uh, uh, any of the new options, you will get this one. Uh, and uh, there is a third one, item ID changes on item ID change. Uh, this one is suitable uh, for uh, dynamic modules, you know. Uh, before it was impossible to cache breadcrumbs, uh, m uh, menus, uh, because the menus, the uh, uh, highlighted, the highlighted menu changes on every page, or uh, uh, so. Uh, and it, it's actually as item ID is the base of the Joomla system uh, uh, routing, and uh, everything is based on. Uh, it depends on item ID. It's it's most useful type of module cache uh, uh, around because uh, modules are also defined by item ID, which models appear are also defined by, uh, uh, determined by the item ID. So, uh, uh, except for the static ones, this is the, all, the another time that's, uh, another type that's uh, uh, a lot to use. Sorry, uh, I've slept two hours yesterday, so <laughs> I might appear a little bit uh, slow. Okay, how do we do that? In addition to cache field that was required in 1.5, there, there is new hidden field, you see here. You alt, you, uh, you have, first you have cache, yes, then you have, I will show you the example. For the static one. We have, and I will, I will show, because Joomla has, uh, uh, Joomla 1.6 has all, uh, all kinds of this, all these types implemented in the default modules that are packed with Joomla. Uh, so uh, it's like a kind of, examples. Uh, I'm sorry, this is a really slow netbook, so have patience. Okay. Ah, uh, yes. Let me do one meter. Below that one. So, you have the old field cache. That's the same as it was before in 1.5. Uh, and caching cache time. And then you have this ca cache mode that that fires. See default static and value well static. Uh, th this one fires this static mode of operation. Then we have the item ID that's used in breadcrumbs and menu. Uh, for instance, mode menu. See, item ID. Mode. And that's all that is required. Just put here and it will follow that model, uh, mode of operation. Uh, and th these are, these are these that are done just by the XML. And then you have the mo uh, modes to be called from inside the module. These are most more uh, flexible ones but they are also a bit more complicated to implement. Uh, then you have first mode uh, is save URI. Uh, it's the same as view cache, uh, a component view cache I showed you before. You pass it URL parameters and it automatically 
pulls the value uh, out of them uh, and creates a caching ID. So you decide which, for instance, you're creating a module this, that shows a different picture on each category. So what you need is cat ID. You put it in here and uh, cache will change on each category. That's it. Uh, what, how do you implement it in code? First thing you need to do is here. Yeah, instead of cache, you have own cache. It this tells the renderer that this module is doing its own cache from inside. Uh, then in the main module file, you see these are parameters uh, you need to pass as, a, on, as an object. Cache mode is safe URI. And then you pass class, method, uh, and method parameters uh, to it. And also you have the mode parameters that are this uh, here. In this case, in the case of safe URI, the, uh, the mode parameters are this ID, item ID, the same as it, as it was in the uh, uh, view caching. Uh, it's just an array of, uh, of uh, parameters and uh, their uh, filtering uh, type. Uh, so in integer, integer in the, those two cases. Uh, and in, then instead of ordinary, uh, instead of calling list is mode related, mode related items helper get list, you call gmodule helper module cache and pass this parameter. So this is actually, as I said, this is actually a callback caching uh, made easier so don't, you don't need to invoke all these classes and uh, uh, define the, the workarounds and so on so on. You can look in the uh, module helper, module cache uh, uh, method if you're really, really interested in what's happening behind the scenes, but uh, that's, I think it's a bit easier to do. Uh, then we have, beside this save URI, uh, you have ID. This one, uh, uh, module sets its own caching ID according to its own formula. So you can just pick up what kind of model you want. You create the ID yourself and pass it to the, to the, to the helper and it will also, uh, it, it might seem, uh, I don't know, boring or something like that <laughs> to, to, to all, all this talk about caching IDs, but this is the base for the creation of caching files. So you can have one caching file for all instances. You can have, for instance, tens, 10 caching files, files for uh, in ten, for 10 cases. Uh, and that this 10, case, uh, 10 caching files mean that your module will in appear in 10 different uh, editions or uh, uh, it will, will render like uh, picture A, picture B, picture C, like 10 pictures. If you use the static one, it will just one picture for all cases. So, and more, more interactive mo your module is, a more refined this method must be. Uh, I hope you're getting what I'm trying to, <laughs> to, to say. Uh, ID. Just category. So. Category. Here we have again own cache and inside. Uh, and if we look at this one, this one is a really nice example because it shows this. All this code here is used for just for calculation of the ID, because 
module itself has different modes of operation. So uh, depending on the mode of operation, uh, you have the uh, module itself has dynamic and normal. And you see normal is just based on cat ID, uh, category ID. When in the case of dynamic, you have different types. Uh, in category types, you, you just you use ID. In the categories type, you also use ID. Uh, in an article uh, type, it, use, it uses category ID. So depends on the uh, on the layout, uh, what kind, which, uh, which, uh, how the ID of the cache will be calculated. Uh, again, we are using the module cap or module cache and passing the parameters, which are here, cache mode is ID. Method parameters are parameters of the module itself. Uh, mode parameters is the ca cache ID as ca it was calculated before here. See, caching ID yeah, is serialized and MD5 uh, of this, all this, this plus uh, module to module, which means that it pulls in the parameters sent in, uh, set in the module. So if you have multiple instances of module, or uh, it, it, it won't use the same caching file for the all instances, it will separate them. That's why this part is here in the calculation. Uh, Oh, now I'll just quickly mention this two function callback cache. It's first of the flexible cache, or, or perhaps I can spend some time here. Uh, first of the flex flexible caching types, it's really, really useful type uh, for all of you that are they're programming like dynamic um, components that are not just doing one thing. Uh, uh, sim simple things. The more the complicated it is, uh, the, uh, the extension more refined cache. It needs to work properly. So uh, caching uh, functions is really really useful. And also, you, Joomla itself uses this uh, in the back uh, in the system in the framework uh, to speed up things like um, uh, rendering modules. Or uh, I will show you function one is called in component caliper, for instance. Here it is. Uh, very. So instead of doing this this query all over again, uh, uh, it the the callback cache first time it runs the fu the function then it stores the result of the function uh, uh, in caching in cache and uh, until the the uh, uh, parameters passed to the function change it you just reuses or uh, and of course uh, 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 it depends also on the on the lifetime of the cache set so these are the two uh, factors that uh, uh, determine wh whether the cache is used or it, uh, the the function is run uh, run again. Uh, and there is the last type of the cache. This, these two are really simpler, uh, si really similar. Uh, uh, row cache and ma uh, method or function cache are really si uh, similar uh, with the difference that row cache is more used for the uh, results of the script 
that isn't really a function. Uh, for instance, you can cache uh, uh, remote XML queries, uh, and the results you get back, you, ju you cache it with the raw cache. Uh, with the function, you, ju you, you need to, 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 to have a function, actually, which you can cache. Uh, you, don't, you cannot cache smaller parts of the inside the, the function. Uh, but actually, the function is like proxy to the raw cache in its essence. Uh, And there is also an output cache uh, that caches output of some part of the script, but this one is not really used a lot and uh, not also not used in Joomla. Uh, it's basically basically output buff output buffering with caching. Uh, uh, raw cache is full, fully controlled by the coder, so you need to do decide what to store, when to store, how to classify stored units, and so on. It, uh, it doesn't have anything except serialization and deserialization uh, working in behind of it. Uh, so you need to manually call uh, store and then you need to manually call get method to, to, to operate on it. Uh, function, uh, uh, fun uh, callback cache or the function uh, cache has the, it doesn't have a get method. It just it just has. Uh, if we look at it, page. Uh, sorry, I need to find an example. It just has the get. It doesn't have the store, the callback cache. See, uh, uh, function itself. Uh, I mean, the caching itself runs uh, store if it needs to. But in in case of raw cache, you're the complete control. You decide when, to, at which point to store and which point point to get. Uh, uh, for instance. Uh, Here it is, here is the raw cache example. See, you need to do it like this. First you do the get, and if you don't get the result, then run the function, and at the end, store the result of the uh, function, or in this, in, in this case, uh, a query. It could be also remote XML, it could be like image resize or anything. It doesn't matter what's inside you, just it's up to the your needs what what you will do with it. So it's most basic type or a very powerful one, but you need to know what you're doing uh, because everything is up to your code. No, not n nothing almost nothing is done automatically like in the other types. Um, So examples of use model performing expensive queries or similar operations. Um, yeah, that was, uh, uh, sorry, that was a uh, fun callback cache. Uh, this is the, for the rule. Uh, expensive queries, remote XML, thumbnails, reusable text, or any reusable data, data set. Uh, it's a bit abstract, but it can come handy. Uh, uh, how, how do you access raw cache? That's something that's different between 1.5 and 1.6. You just access it by passing an empty controller, you see, to, to uh, uh, 
in the in the 1.5 we couldn't actually get it. Uh, it worked because uh, the get method uh, methods and the store methods were a, a little bit mixed up. Uh, uh, it was like in 1.5 caching 1.5 works like l randomly <laughs> so <laughs> because uh, instances of uh, and uh, because of the overloading of classes uh, you, you never know inside when you trace the the flow of the framework you never know which one of the gets you're gonna get uh, uh, because the first one is object inherited get and then is the cache get and then it is the uh, the uh, Cache. Uh, con now it's controller. Before it, it was. Um, I don't remember the name. Uh, and then the, at the end is the low level get of the uh, file cache or the mem cache. This is the, the, the doing the, le the low, low, lower operation. So if you get if, if you uh, uh, set uh, cache. J cache to get you never knew which one of the these methods you're gonna get in 1.6 I hope uh, I solved this by properly working the, the right ones at the right time uh, it looks a little bit complicated when you look at the classes but as far as tested it it works uh, so that completes what I had to say as an introduction what I wanted to do now, but I don't know if it's going to work. <laughs> if any of you has any questions, but not the questions like why you did that, but uh, what I meant is uh, if, we, if we have some problem we could solve here together. Uh, if any of you is working on an extension and you don't know how to cache it, that's what I wanted to do, but I don't know if it's going to work. So <laughs> it's your turn. <laughs> Uh -huh. I'm sorry, sorry, I didn't have that day. Sorry, sorry, um, I've been doing a little bit of work with um, using um, music template or music macro as a, as a sort of controller for a sort of rule engine. For, sorry, I didn't hear you. Uh, sorry, I've, I've, been, I've been working on a, on a rule engine uh, implementation. A rule engine. Uh, yeah. Control many things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, if I'm using GOIP, I, I use my overall cache to just add an additional key not containing the country name, and then that looks after my, um, my GOIP thing. Mm -hmm. what's, what's the best sort of strategy, do you think, for um, getting the best performance out of the site? Is it to try to um, cache the entire page, if possible, or do you think you can get really good gains now um, using all the, I mean, fantastic control of what you want to launch? I had no idea that this was in there, so it's a big surprise to me. But do you think you can get really good performance by intelligent use of, um, for example, the module cache control for new controls? Uh. Well, as always, the answer is depends. <laughs> uh, uh, what I meant to say is, uh, it really depends what your extensions, modules, uh, what's happening on the, on the, the page. If you have, for instance, a lot of personalization, uh, the, or you have random things happening, for instance, rand show random art article, then if you cache the whole one, the next user will get the same random. <laughs> article uh, by uh, using smaller units. Uh, it, it, it's simple. The smaller you, g you go, uh, the slower it gets. So use the biggest unit that works in your case. That would be the general rule. Uh, I, I, I hope. It's Uh, 
it's really it, 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 this stuff is really like you need to measure it. Uh, you need to the simplest thing, uh, the simplest way to do it is to uh, run X debug. Uh, do a profile, it, it has a profiling function, and then you just load this profile you, you, you got in the, uh, uh, what's called KK, uh, sorry, uh, it's part of the KDA, uh, K cache, K, K cache green, yeah. And it will show you graphical overview what's happening and how much, which part takes the most, most uh, of the time, and then you know, okay, this is the candidate for the caching. Uh, and then you can experiment. It, 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 it really, it's a thing of experimenting and doing, uh, trying things, uh, which one is gonna go, uh, work better. Uh, of course, also depends on if you have a million users uh, in a minute or if you have 100 users in a day, then you, know, you don't need cash because <laughs> cash be, will expire before the next one, the next user will come uh, and it, it will actually make things lower <laughs> because, of the, because of the, oh, there is an overhead. When you create a caching file, there is an overhead of creation this uh, uh, compared to just running a function, but this, this is more percentage compared to what you gain when you next hundred or thousand or ten thousand years get the same thing and it is just loaded from a, from a file or for a unit stored in the memory. Uh, Please say the name of the tool again. Uh, K cash green. K cash green green grant. Yeah. So I can K write it. K yeah, K cash grant. That was really pro probably. Uh, I don't I don't have it here because it doesn't run on. Uh, I have Windows, but <laughs> uh, I thought of of running. It doesn't have a CD, so I could not. I didn't have the time to actually install Linux as a parallel uh, op, um, op, a parallel um, OS, uh, so we, I could show it to you. But uh, if anyone. Uh, we can download it later and uh, run it. So it's a really cool thing because you graphically see what what function is called which function and how much time the, uh, each uh, part takes and uh, how many times one function is repeated. So basically, the the, the candidates for caching are those that take a, a lot of time or are repeated often. Uh, for instance, uh, at the moment I'm working on the uh, ACL. Uh, by the way, on the Sunday there, there I have another uh, session, uh, and there is a lot of repeated queries doing the same thing in that. Uh, in that, uh, because for instance, uh, uh, you query for groups that particular user is a member of, and in the in the case of uh, not so much not so much repeated uh, for instance in the facebook when you have a lot of users that are logged in but in the case of cms you have one user that's really prevailed, prevailing that's the uh, uh, unlocked not logged in user that's the in the 1.6 terminology is the public group uh, and every user in normal without the cache every user that comes to the page uh, runs the query which which groups this user is a part of, and when you catch this, you have instantly you, you get 100 milliseconds. I don't know how, many, how how long it takes. It depends on the system also. Uh, no, perhaps not 100. Perhaps 10 milliseconds. Uh, uh, but uh, that's something that's repeated over and over again, and really rarely changes. So it's really good candidate for for very long time. Uh, uh, a lifetime of cash because uh, it would need, really need to change only in the case you add some user group, otherwise it will the result will stay, would stay the same. Uh, and uh, yesterday at the night when I was debugging something, I found out that actually the same query for this this particular query I'm talking about in, is run like five or six times repeatedly in Joomla. Okay, this can be solved by temporary caching uh, uh, 
in the static vari variable. Uh, so you don't have to do it six times to save this five times, but still the next public user that comes will still have to run another one without the more permanent type of cache. Uh, I hope I answered your question. <laughs> um, what do you mean by the raw cache? Uh, I don't understand what you mean. Uh, raw cache, uh, that's I, the name I came up, up with, so I don't know if it's the right one. It's the cache that stores anything you give to it. Cache, um, anything you, you can pass anything to the caching and it will store it. It can be, for instance, a picture. It can be uh, any any da data type uh, can be stored with raw cache. For instance, callback cache. You cannot s store a picture in a callback because there is no callback. It's a picture. It's not a function. Uh, view view cache also covers something completely different. So raw cache is most ba most basic ones. It takes any data type. Uh, uh, and in, it's, it's entirely up to you what you do with this raw material you pass to it. It doesn't have any workarounds working on it, nothing just stores the thing, uh, the data you pass to it. That's why I name it raw cache, because it doesn't have any refined parts <laughs> around it. Uh, except serialization and deserialization is performed automatically, uh, uh, so you don't have to do it every time, which you need to be careful of, because when you do the double serialization, you will get errors on the deserialization. Uh, yeah, point. Generally, the template would be covered only by the system caching system plugin. The rest should not have anything. To, the, the, the rest should not cache template at all. The, the rest are underlaying, and the, the, the template is rendered up, up on them. Except if you're using inside, uh, for, except if if you're serving different uh, templates or different layouts inside the component, uh, for instance, then view cache would cover it and with the, so that what you're talking about would happen, yeah, really. Uh, generally, if you're doing this template, uh, I mean layout switching and things, in, inside the template, the template itself is not covered by any t type of cache except the, except the plugin. Uh, plugin is just the flat one, that one does not have any it just stores the whole page, and that's it. That that's why it's not really, really useful. It 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 gives you the most speed, but it kills all the flexibility. So uh, uh, it's just freezed in the first one that comes, creates a page, and whatever happens on that page is stored until the cache expires for that particular page. So that are, there are not so many cases where this plugin is really useful because normally pages, more and more websites are not really static. There are really dynamic things happening on the website, so you need to to make smaller caches uh, uh, to 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 enable this interactivity or random things happening or I don't know. The clock changing. <laughs> if you, ha some people have the clock on the <laughs> website. It's, it's a stupid example, but <laughs> uh, it gives you the picture what I mean. If you, if you would cache the, that page, you would have everybody uh, for next five minutes would get the same time <laughs> show, showing. Um. 
Yeah, but that one doesn't have the graphic uh, representation. It does just have the. It just creates a table uh, with with the timings. Uh, the K crash K cash grind uh, creates really nice pictures uh, out of it. Uh, so it's really, really more, uh, really easier to see what's happening. Uh, You can run uh, uh, basically any uh, in 1.6. You can run any basically any kind of memory cache that I know of. Know of uh, uh, because that's the one of part of the improvement was to enable X cache, Win cache. Uh, I, I really for, I forgot a little about this one, but I can just look it up. I don't know it's not working. <laughs> oh, okay. I can, we can look at here. I'll tell you in a second. Joomla cache controller. No, controller storage, sorry. Uh, here we have APC cache light. That's file, another version of cache, uh, of file caching. E accelerator, memcache, wincache, and xcache. Uh, that pretty much covers every major. Uh, that's the, that are the drivers that are all actually, or at least as I can say, and as I can have tested, uh, uh, that are working because in 1.5 there were some of those were present but were not really working. Uh, so. No, because the the more abstract Jcash, uh, you you just call cache to get, for instance, and and one of the controllers, and then uh, whatever you have set as the uh, as the storage uh, is used, and it it has the same functions. So whatever whatever uh, uh, storage you use does the same thing, but just the, of course the memory based ones that. Does it much much faster? No, you just need to take care that you have the proper drivers or the proper. For instance, in the case of memcache, you also need the memcached running uh, the the uh, the daemon uh, and the PHP extension. Both you need both for the memcached. Uh, but uh, uh, in generally, uh, when you go to the configuration. You just get in the drop down the the ones that are actually installed in the, on the system. Uh, the only thing, uh, case when you could get in trouble is <laughs> when you would disable certain. You would, for instance, set uh, memcache as uh, your uh, storage, and then you would disable it in the PHP, or uh, then it wouldn't work. You have to. You would have to manually go to the. To the configuration and change the storage, but normally that should that shouldn't happen by itself. It 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 would happen if somebody would mess would be messing with the PHP settings. Uh, as I said, as far as I know, it works. <laughs> I I've tested a lot, and it's really better than it was in 1.5. But of course. Uh, bugs are still hidden <laughs> in waiting <laughs> to be solved. <laughs> That's always so. Uh, one of the things that were improved also in 1.6 was uh, that uh, because some of those caching uh, systems don't have the locking and unlo unlocking, uh, it's now implemented on the uh, more ab abstract level. So every item is when you we are you. For instance, somebody is when you're storing some uh, item, uh, that item gets locked for all the others, so that it doesn't happen that two people would write to the same uh, two two instances of the application would write to the same uh, file, and then we would get corrupted or file or item in the memory uh, in in the memory cache uh, uh, memory based uh, caches. Uh, 
uh, that's something that wasn't impl was really implemented in 1.5 in file uh, caching, but on a lower level, uh, it was like uh, uh, it was like with locking the file. Actually, now it's uh, checking. Is now it's done but with a flex. Uh, so the system sets a flag, it's locked, and then uh, so it works the same for all the, the all the storage uh, drives because some of those don't have the native mechanisms for locking or, or unlocking. Uh, some some have this implemented in the lower levels, so you cannot write uh, at the same time uh, to to the same. I will, I will say it from my mind, for instance, Xcache, I think that it has it, but I'm not really sure uh, that that you cannot write to the same item for, in one, uh, for instance, perhaps in WinCache you could do that because WinCache is, I think, the least developed of those, uh, uh, but it's also, also only usable on the uh, Microsoft, uh, what's it called? Uh, Microsoft, uh, not Apache, but the uh, oh, I IS. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then, then you have you get in the loop. Uh, um, I don't would have to look up what's the timing on the loop, uh, but it, it tries to loop and wait for. I think maximum it loops like 30 times. I'm talking just just making up these numbers. I would have to look in the code. Uh, and if the, this doesn't happen after 30 tries, then it gives up. And then later in the code, it tries again. And if the, if that doesn't happen, uh, uh, it would normally take like 30 seconds for all these operations to happen, uh, then it start, something is really seriously wrong and it's better to run the actual function or perform uh, the actual pulling out the data from the source uh, than uh, to try to write to it because something went really wrong. That, that, that uh, operation. Uh, depends on the type of the ca uh, cache, uh, yeah, but ja uh, for instance, if it fire the system cache plugin that covers everything, that one doesn't need to have any developer interaction uh, intervention, uh, but all others do, yeah. Because they need to be implemented in the code, uh, otherwise it's just doing its thing without catch. Uh, we can actually look up these timings I was talking about. Storage. This one is control. Oh, here is lock. Uh, it's implemented in the lower level. Okay, <laughs> uh, it's not hard coded this timing. Uh, the lock time is uh, configurable. Uh, but what is the default? A lock time 15 seconds is the default. Uh, so for 15 second, seconds, it will try uh, enough to. Actually, it will it will wait for 15 seconds, and then will try again. That's how it works. And then will, it will try two times, and if it fails after the second attempt, it won't try again. It will just run the uh, function with or or whatever is, is it's it's done uh, without the caching. Uh, that, that's how it works. Yeah. 
you can look at the code if you're really interested in how it works. I, I, I must admit, I really f a bit forgot of the details because this was done like a, a year ago. So, uh, <laughs> any else? Anybody else? Then if oh, okay. <laughs> Ah, that would be a really tricky answer. <laughs> uh, I was actually banned from the project, so I cannot do that. <laughs> That's the the truth. But uh, perhaps in the perhaps in the future uh, it will happen, but not not necessary under the cover of Joomla. Perhaps it could happen under other umbrellas, or perhaps in Joomla. I won't predict anything, but. Uh, the thing is that, frankly said, uh, I don't know of any of the core, so-called core developers who, who would have much uh, knowledge about caching that's presently in the in the core. So I don't know. Perhaps Ian had knows something, but uh, basically uh, it was all done by me, and it's in the same shape as it was uh, at that point, uh, and. I haven't seen anything done on it since uh, I left, uh, or they threw me out. I didn't really leave. <laughs> so, uh, so what will happen in the future? It's really hard to predict. Uh, Completely understand it. Yeah. That's so, in some ways, actually, it's quite a simple concept, um, but to actually uh, to, to do it properly and to put it to the core, you need to think about the very carefully. Yeah, so that's, that's, uh, that's, that's, that, that's something uh, I was talking about uh, before when I answered your previous, one of the, your previous questions. You need to really test it, you need to look at the timings and see what's working and what, what's not working. And, you have to test a lot to see that everything is still functioning as it, sh it should uh, without, uh, it works without the cache. Uh, so basically it should work the same as it would work without the cache. Or perhaps you can say, okay, having a random item, not really random, but ra uh, uh, random on every five minutes, it's okay for me, okay, then it's acceptable if you're a, aware of that and you, it's, it, you think it's okay, then it's okay. Uh, because normally, for instance, there, I, I can remember one, one uh, case where uh, somebody was complaining that random items on the particular page doesn't change when you reload the page. But uh, the answer from my side was who reloads the same page <laughs> normally <laughs> all over again. It doesn't happen. You will look at one page, you look at the next, next one, you don't reload the same page all over again, except if you accept that something will change or waiting for some new new, new news, but uh, normally not. Okay, we are uh, for the time. <laughs> time is up. Okay, thank you. <laughs>